Let's go. Hello, my name is Ormaster101. And I'm Zuri. And tonight we mourn the fallen. America? No. We're doing, on tonight's episode of Noobs in Space, we talk about everybody's favorite rover, the Opportunity. Yes, uh, in honor of the Opportunity rovers, over 15 years in service, uh, we are going to dedicate this Noobs in Space to talking about the history of the Mars rover program and Mars satellite program. Uh, as you guys may have heard or maybe do not know, and we'll obviously tell you about, the Opportunity rover uh, submitted its last frequency back in, uh, in her hibernation back in June 12th of 2018. Uh, it was uh, Damaged and it was hoped that it would reboot once the atmosphere cleared. It did not. Um, its solar panels were too damaged, uh, and the dust and the storm that they hoped would help clear off some of the dust uh, did not do so. It submitted its last transmission on May on June twelfth, two thousand eight, two thousand eighteen. Um, of my battery is low and it's getting dark. And that was the last it was the last transmission I ever sent it. After a last ditch attempt to restart the rover, February 13th, 2019, officials declared the opportunity rover was officially its mission officially complete and the rover was no longer uh was no longer active. So, a history about Opportunity, also known as Mir One or Opie, as it's as it was nicknamed. Uh, Opie. Du, 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 du. <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> so Opie was launched on July seventh, July seventh, two thousand three, as part of NASA's Mars Exploration Rover Program. It landed in the Mariana Pl Planium on January twenty fifth of two thousand four. Three weeks after its twin Spirit, also Mir A, touched down on the other side of the planet. With a planned 90 sole duration of activity, a little more, slightly more than 90 Earth days, uh, Spirit functioned until getting stuck in 2009 and ceased communications in 2010. While Opportunity was able to stay operational for 5,352 days after landing, maintaining its power and key systems through continually recharging its batteries through solar power, power and hibernating during events such as dust storms to save energy. This careful operation allowed Opportunity to exceed its operating initial operating and predicted lifespan by over 14 years and 200 days. 55 times its, its intended uh, lifespan. Making it one of the longest lasting um, well, uh, longest lasting probes by the by any space association. Uh, during its during its operation time, Opie had managed to travel over forty five kilometers or twenty eight miles, with which it having an average speed of like less than a mile an hour. That's pretty good. <laughs> What? Now, are, are, were you going to break out in Amazing Grace again? <laughs> Maybe. I swear to God. 
a, vamos dizer, So, part of OP's mission was to determine if potential life existed on Mars, particularly whether recoverable water could be found on Mars, to characterize the Mars climate and geography, and geology, uh, and then to prepare for a potential human mission to Mars. Mm -hmm. They managed to find water at the poles. Okay. It's twin uh, Opie's, um, most notably Opie's twin spirit. Managed to find water near the uh, managed to find water like uh, frozen water, and the uh, fucking uh, launch patch for the rovers is uh, Duck Dodgers. <laughs> oh my god! From it Looney Tunes. It is not. You shut your mouth. Uh, yes, it is. Okay. Uh, from late April to early uh, June 2005, Opportunity uh, man was lodged in a sand dune. Oof. With several wheels buried in the sand, over a six-week period, Earth-based physical simulations were performed to decide how best to extract the North Road from its position without risking permanent mobilizations of the valuable vehicle. This maneuver, uh, maneuvering a few centimeters at a time, eventually freed the rover, which resumed its travels. <laughs> uh, one of Opie's most successful uh, missions was it managed to navigate its way across the Mars surface to investigate a crater site, the Endurance Crater, which uh, managed to examine the impact site with, of its own heat shield and discover an intact meteorite known as the Heat Shield Rock on the surface of Mars. Opportunity also proceeded uh, and traveled through the Erebus crater, crater, a large, shallow, particularly partially buried crater, and a stopover on the way towards Victoria crater. And experience where it experienced some mechanical issues with its robotic arm. In 2006, Opportunity reached Victoria crater and explored along the rim in a clockwise direction. In 2007, it returned to Duck Bay, <laughs> its original rival point. Because their name, because their patch was Duck Dodgers. Mm -hmm. uh, do, 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 do. In the summer of 2014, NASA reported Opportunity was suffering from amnesia events in which the rover failed to write data, telemetry uh, information uh, to its non-volatile -vol memory. The hardware failure was believed due to the age-related fault in one of the rover's seven memory banks. As a result, NASA had aimed to force the rover's software to ignore the failed memory bank. Amnesia events continued to occur, which eventually resulted in vehicle resets. In light of this, the Sol on Sol 4027. The rover was configured to operate on RAM in RAM only mode and complete avoiding completely avoiding its non volatile memory uh, for storage. Just, I need a little more copper. Okay. History of the now opportunity and spirit were only uh, Several Mar several rovers in the history of Mars. So, Opportunity and Spirit are just the are just some of the, uh, the some of the vehicles in the in the exp exploration of Mars. Over four countries uh, have successfully 
successfully probed Mars with a further three also having having attempted to. Uh, the history of exploration of Mars started uh, the first major successful exploration attempt on Mars was in 1971, the Soviet space program scored a major success by putting the first spacecraft in a Martian orbit, even touching a lander vehicle down on its surface. The Mars 3 orbiter returned some eight months of data that revealed much about the planet's topography, atmosphere, weather, and geology, though the mission's lander was only able to touch down on the surface. It returned data for only 20 seconds before it went dark. Later, the Operation Spacecraft, uh, such as NASA's Mariner 9, returned far more detailed data on the planet's atmosphere, mapped its surface, and revealed Martian topography, capturing many more images of its strange distant of this strange distant world. Oh shoot! Oh god! Stay back! Stay back! Mars exploration. Mars, bitches. Red Mars rocks. Cars? Red rocks. Red rocks. You ever seen that Chappelle skit? I have not. United States of Space, motherfucker. United States of Space. Red rocks. <laughs> they keep asking him questions like, uh, so jobs have plummeted. United States of Space. Uh, come on, I'm just trying to find a little more History copper. of uh, Mars dates back further, though. Uh, the Mars Nick 1 the U by the USSR was launched on October 10, 1960. It was on a tentative Mars flyby. The spacecraft did not manage to uh, pass Earth orbit, though. Uh, the Sputnik 20... There was a couple other failures, such as the Marsnik 2, that did not uh, manage to reach past Earth's orbit. The Sputnik 2 was launched on October 24, 1962, on a Mars flyby. The spacecraft only managed to achieve around moon orbit. The Mars 1 uh, was a first true success on exploring Mars. It was launched on November 1, 1962, on a Mars flyby. Spacecraft managed to uh, actually do a Mars, successfully pass Mars flyby. However, its radio failed at around 65.9 million miles and was unable to send any detailed data back. And then the Mariner 4. Uh, U.S. spacecraft was launched on 1928. Uh, it was on November 28, 1953. It was the first to fly by Mars on July 4, 14, 1965, and sent 21 photos back to Earth. Two days after Mariner 4 was launched, the Soviet Union tried again with the Zod 2. The spacecraft passed Mars, but its radio failed and not return any planetary data other than uh, just orbital periods. Have any Mariners, idea? Mariners six and seven in 1969 also managed to reach Mars. Sent back a few dozen photos. Coincidentally, all of these first spacecraft flew over areas of Mars that were cratered. It gave a false first impression that Mars looked like the Moon. Several more attempts were made in 1969 and 1971. Most failed to reach their target including the Mariner 8, which uh, the orbiter failed during launch, the Cosmos 14, 419, um, which only managed to orbit around the moon, and a few more that uh, detonated on the runway. <laughs> Oof. That's always fun. Yeah, like with the Challenger. Wow. I mean, it, it did explode. Wow. It exploded. <laughs> I'm telling facts. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Going for the gut punch. <laughs> Are you not expecting that? In 1971, uh, 
Mars 2 landers on the surface. Uh, and then I already talked about Mariner 9. Uh, yeah, Mariner 9 uh, arrived to quite a surprise. Uh, when they when it started to land on Mars, the entire planet was engulfed in a dust storm. It managed to only get a few photos um, of the surface of what appeared to be poking out of the, above the plumes, which showed to be the top of dormant volcanoes. Marinoid also discovered a huge rift across the planet's surface of Mars that was called the uh, Volusus Marinus after the spacecraft that discovered it. Mariner 9 managed to, the, while the Mariner 9 lander portion like didn't see anything really, uh, Mariner 9, the satellite, managed to spend a year orbiting the red planet and returned nearly 7,000 photos. Uh, in March 6, uh, no, in the Mars 5 managed to, uh, orbit around the, orbit around the red planet for a few days on 1974 before it continued on its path to exploring the rest of the solar system. Mars 6 launched in, in August 5th, 1973, the Mars flyby module landed uh, module on landed to arrive on March 3rd, 1974, and while the satellite managed to transit, managed to transmit for several years, the lander, uh, lander failed due to a fast impact and was crushed like a tin can upon <laughs> ball of fire. <laughs> I've had those issues before as well. <laughs> Come on! Oh god! You broke your deck! Wow. I mean. Go from talking about the Challenger explosion to uh, sex jokes. Uh, the Mars 7 launched on 1973. The Mars flyby module and lander arrived in 1974. And while the flyby module man is still still floats around the planet to this day, the lander missed the planet entirely and just flew off into the void of space. <laughs> I feel like we'll find these, like, these rovers eventually one day. We're just like, ex we're like trying to escape uh, an intergalactic alien species and we just crash into the Mars 7 landing. It's <laughs> <I'm laughs> just floating in the abyss. <laughs> Come on, I just want some more copper, goddammit. Oh uh, shit! Meanwhile, NASA sent two pairs of orders. The uh, Viking 1 and Viking 2 both successfully managed to arrive in 1976. Uh, sending a lander to reach service order, managed to remain working above spacecraft, lasting years, transmitting uh, realms of inf reams of information. The Viking One managed to last till 1982, and Viking Two managed to just last till 1980. Combined, the Viking orbiters took over 50,000 photos. Hopes. In the 1990s, NASA's uh, attempt to reach the red planet came in the 1990s when the Observer launched the planet in September 25th, 1992 and was lost just before it was supposed to achieve orbit in 1993. <clears throat> the loss of communication was never fully explained, but it was most likely because the fuel tank ruptured, causing the spaceship spacecraft to spin wildly. <laughs> Just spinning like a top into the abyss. <laughs> the loss was especially painful because the space had crossed so much. Uh, in two uh, 2012 million, uh, $212 million in 1990, or about $813 million in today's dollars. <laughs> One of the factors that sparked I knew it was one of the primary factors that sparked a new move within NASA to create better, faster, cheaper models, or the FBC missions that would take advantage. 
The Mars Global Surveyor left Earth in 1996 when it arrived on Mars in 1997. Its mission extended several times was extended several times until NASA lost contact in 2006. The MSG managed to map the planet from pole to pole, revealing ancient signs of water such as goalies and hemite, a film mineral that forms in water. Its data helped NASA decide whether where to land rovers in 2004. MSG also took pictures of public interest, including the re-imaging re of the famous face on Mars. That proved it's not a face, it's a mountain. Soviet Union's Mars 96 mission launched on November 1996. Uh, however, the orbiter, two landers, and two penetrators were all lost after the rocket failed. The FPC program's first mission uh, was also a great success and marked one of the first rovers to uh, successfully manage to traverse Mars. The Pathfinder land, uh, lander in Sigourney we, the Sigourney rover arrived on Mars in July 1997, and the lander was first used to set up an airbag to cushion the landing. Sigourney was the first rover to trundle on Mars. Pathfinder was, was expected to last a month and Sigourney a week, but both made it far beyond the, uh, that to September 1997, when contact was lost with Pathfinder. Japan entered the Russian to Mars arena with Nozomi, which launched on July 4th, 1998. The orbiter failed. The orbiter, however, failed to enter Mars orbit on, two, on December 2003, and was sent traveling into the abyss. We're gonna get like alien contact like one day, and it's like, yeah, you should. You sent us presents, and it's all of like the all the shit that we like. Yeah, all the shit that we tried to send into orbit, but it fucked up. The Mars Climate Orbiter launched on December 11, 1998 and disappeared after arriving on September 1999, likely because one team likely because one team was operating on metric units while the other team controlling the rover was operating in imperial units, which flooded the command console with um, unrecognizable commands. Send, uh, sending the rover into unoccupied space near near the poles, where it failed to send, send back any transmission. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> uh, the Mars Polar Lander, the M or the MPL. And it's two penetrators with it called Deep Space 2, launched on January 3rd, 1999. We're also lost, probably because MPL erroneously thought it had landed and shut off its engines prematurely, plummeting <laughs> to certain death onto the rocky surface below. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh, we landed! <laughs> Falls out of the sky. Challenger, honey, I'm so ex I'm so sorry that you have to be associated with these other pe with these other rovers. The Challenger? I mean, opportunity. I said opportunity. Challenger? I said opportunity. The Mars Odyssey launched on March 7, 2001, arrived on October 2, 24, 2001. The orbit is still conducting its extended science mission it broke the records for longest serving spacecraft uh, on uh, at Mars and orbits in the atmosphere and has relayed more than 95% of all the data uh, of, all, of all the data received on any rover on Mars so it acts as the is like the hub that collects the information and sends it back. Raw meat is what I just picked up. Raw meat? I said raw meat. Just, just put meat in the bra. <laughs> meat bra. Put meat in bra, bra. Somebody is probably called boobs. Uh raw meat, and that makes me angry. 
It should. It should. Comment in the comment in the comments below if you've called boobs bromid. The European Space Agency launched the Mars Express slash Beagle 2 on June 2nd, 2003. The order completed its prime mission in 2005 and it's currently on an extended mission. The lander was lost on arrival in 2000. <laughs> On December 25th, 2003, when it failed to turn on its rockets to allow it to slowly descend to the surface. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so a lot of these just, like, want to free dive to the surface. Because I'm free, free, free falling. Free falling. Each variety of uh, spirit opportunity discovered water on the red planet. Another NASA orbit, the Mars Constant Orbiter, was launched on August 25th, August 12th, 2005. It began orbiting the planet in 2006. Spacecraft provided data that included more than 25,000 images, 3,500 radar observation, and the mission returned and with more total data than produced by all other Mars missions combined. It was one of the first uh, orbiters to successfully return. The others were either just left there, or they just stopped working, so they just started floating into the planet. Or, you know, they yeeted themselves into the planet. <laughs> into the sun, into the planet. Uh, NASA launched a stationary lander called the Mars Phoenix, which arrived on Mars on May 25th, 2008, found water ice beneath the surface. Phoenix solar panels suffered severe damage from the harsh Martian winter. Communication with the 400 $400 million dollar lander was lost on November 12th. on November 2008. Repeated attempts to reestablish contact. NASA declared the Phoenix broken and dead on May 2010, and da the damage was spotted by the orbital photos taken of the red planet, where the stationary lander had been torn apart by the by the Martian wind. Jesus Christ. And a picture that they didn't release is the opportunity in the background, but it, it has like a lead pipe, and it's like, that's weird. <laughs> it's just like, where did we get a real lead pipe from? <laughs> We're exposing the true lore of the opportunity rover. He sabotaged every rover that came to Mars besides himself. Including his twin. Yes. <laughs> Brother, it's so nice to be here on Mars. I wonder what the humans will say once we get back. Nothing. They will say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck did I just find? Do, 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 do. Russia made another attempt to reach Phobos, one of Mars's outer moons, with the Phobos Grunt mission. It launched in 2011 and crashed into the moon Again. in January 2012. <laughs> <laughs> After failing to leave Earth, low Earth orbit. So it didn't crash into the Mars moon, it crashed into ours. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you think that's a pretty big target they would try and miss. The Phobos grunt was also carrying China's first attempt at a Mars orbit. Oh my god. <laughs> Along with an experiment run by the U.S. Uh, planetary Society designed to study how long a how a long journey through deep space affects microorganisms. Congratulations, we found out they do not survive when crashing into the moon. <laughs> yeah. China wrote off its orbiter, the tiny craft called the Yujo-1, as a total loss, <laughs> and asked Russia for compensation. Hey, bitches, <laughs> your ship crashed our rover into the fucking... <laughs> Give us fucking compensation. Uh, the more powerful 
a rover called the Curiosity arrived at the Gale Crater in 2012 and started searching for signs of ancient habitable environments. Its major findings include finding previously water-soaked areas, detecting methane on the surface, and finding organic compounds considered the building blocks of life. And it's designed to inspire another rover temporarily called Mars 2020, which will do more advanced investigations when it arrives. Curiosity rover also detected, also found fossils of ancient bacteria that once existed on Mars. Huh. Maven, the Mars Atmosphere Volatile Evolution, launched on November 2013 and achieved orbit in, uh, in 2014, looking at changes in the atmosphere of Mars, understanding uh, why it thinned over billions of years. India became uh, the third successful nation successfully arrived fourth successful nation because the maven was a uh, european when the mars orbiter mission successfully achieved, arrived in orbit the spacecraft is uh far enough from the red planet also Im imaged the entire disk which it transmitted several images back to earth and subsequently released to the public for its part the european space agency uh plans to return to mars with two missions later this decade Uh, a rover is planned to is planned to arrive on Mars in 2018. Hey. And that is the it's way past 2018. I said 2019. I thought you said 18. My bad. It's only two months past 2018. Uh, that's fair. That's, that was that the last fact. Yep. Well, <coughs> hang on. I gotta get these things out of here. Biggies. See a space cowboy. <laughs>